Hey everybody, thanks for joining me. I'm Mike Drotus, Bible teacher and preacher, and you've tuned into my YouTube channel, Solving the Prophetic Puzzle. Today I want to talk to you about a subject that I've always been interested in, angels. Angels are all around us, and angels are active. I'm going to talk to you today about the activity of angels during the last days, during the time that we live in right now. Angels are created beings. They were created by God before us. In Job chapter 38, verses 4 through 7, we read that the angels rejoiced and sang as God laid the foundation of the earth. Angels are not humans. Some people think they are, that when they die, they become an angel, and they, they, they live in heaven as an angel. Angels are not humans who have died. Angels are created, and humans are created, two separate beings. Angels are ministering spirits, sent to minister to us, the heirs of salvation. Their job is to minister to the heirs of salvation, Hebrews 1.14. There is an order in the angelic realm. There are different types of angels that do different things. There are messenger angels. There are warring angels. There are angels that stand before the presence of God all the time. There are angels that are guardian angels. Some angels look like humans. Other angels don't look like humans. Every person, though, has an angel. Every person who is ever born has an angel assigned to him, sometimes more than one. Look at Matthew chapter 18. Matthew 18, verse 10. Take heed that you do not despise one of these little ones, for I say to you that in heaven their angels always see the face of my Father who is in heaven. Jesus is talking here. He's saying that these little ones have angels. Well, you don't lose your angel once you grow up. In fact, you probably need your angel more, and probably more than one. There is much activity on the earth involving angels. They tried to lead people to Christ, gently nudging and gently creating situations whereby a person can find the knowledge of the Savior, Jesus Christ. They protect those that they're in charge of. They wage spiritual warfare. Right now, in the invisible realm, the spirit realm, there are great battles being fought. Spiritual warfare is being fought between the angels of God and the prince of the power of the air and satanic demons who are, who are operating under the control of Satan. They are waging war against one another. They hasten, angels hasten to perform the word of God. S Psalm 103, verse 20. Bless the Lord, you his angels, who excel in strength, who do his word, heeding the voice of his word. Bless the Lord, all you his host, you're ministering, you ministers of his who do his pleasure. Angels are ministers, ministering spirits who, who hearken unto the voice of the Lord, who hearken unto the word of God. Angels don't act like humans. They are not moved by your emotions or or even their own emotions. Angels can't read your mind. They stand ready at attention, and they will stand at attention, ready, until they hear and hearken unto the, the word of God. They're waiting for you to speak the word of God. They're waiting for a man or woman of God to just declare and decree the word of God, and then they can begin to move. If you're involved in a difficult situation, speak God's word over that situation. Declare the word of God and angels then have, have something to work with and they can begin to move and activate things. I have had two angelic encounters that I know of. Probably more than that that I don't know about, but I can tell you about two that I did have. Both were at work and they are actually within... 150 feet of one another, actually, on two separate days, but it was at the almost at the very same place. I'm going to read an account to you for about one of these angelic encounters. This is my spiritual journal. In my spiritual journal, I log dreams, I log visions, I log angelic encounters, I, I log teachings that the Lord gives me. I write these things down in a diary format. 
I won't read all of what I had to say about this angelic visit, but I will uh, read the bulk of it to you. The entry date is September 25th, 2019. On Wednesday, September 25th, I was at work in the garden for home education day. I was looking at the setup and reading some literature. At that point in time, I work at a historical uh, garden and I'm a groundskeeper now, but at that point in time, I was working in the garter, garden and it was home education day. There was lots of kids, there was homeschool parents, and there was the regular visitors who come on, on a regular basis to, to look at the, um, the property, to look at the garden, to look at the house. And I was standing there minding my own business. Out of the corner of my eye, I noticed an ordinary man, just an ordinary guy, looked like any other guy. He seemed to be making a straight line straight towards me, but at an easy pace. He wasn't in a rush, but he was walking straight towards me. When he got close, I looked at him and I greeted him. He responded about it being such a nice and beautiful garden. And I said, yeah, I agree. And I asked him, I said, where are you from? He told me he was from Oklahoma. So, of course, I said, I used to live in Oklahoma. And I went to a Bible school. And I told him the name of the Bible school and where it was located. And he commented, he said, yeah, I know about that place. I know about that Bible school. But when I told him that I was, uh, I went to Bible school and I was a, a, a man of God, I was a, a preacher and teacher of the Word of God, when I told him all that, it seemed as though a switch had flipped on. He began to talk to me about the Bible. He was explaining about uh, to me about Psalm 23 and how it's not really good for funerals. He was explaining this. He was telling me how Psalm 23 is not really good for funerals. He was also talking about the still waters. I was having a hard time following him, which I found that very interesting. I have never met an individual who I could not be on par with talking about Scripture and talking about the Bible. Yet as this guy talked, it seemed as though his words were going over my head. But I still wanted to listen. I thought that was interesting, but I continued to listen. He also said that Psalm 46 was a companion scripture to Psalm 23 and that it was double 23. When he started talking about numbers and living waters and still water, I, I looked around and I asked him to follow me so we could be out of the way, uh, away from the table and have a little privacy. Then I began to relay to him a spiritual dream that I had earlier that week that I was still pondering over. That dream is intense, and it was so real. And there are so many things that I still have, don't know, can't figure it all out. But I began to tell him about the dream. He listened, and then he commented, and he described things that I won't get into detail right now. We talked for a long time. The funny thing is, we talked for a long time, and nobody who I worked with came near us. No visitor came near us. No school child came near us. Nobody came near us. It's as if there was a shield surrounding us, a dome surrounding us, that nobody was going to penetrate. And he and I sat there and talked about the Bible. I said, what is your name? He said, my name's Robert. He says, I'm on a trip with my brother. He also is here. And then he looked at me and he told me, he goes, it's good that you work in this garden. God likes gardens too, he said. We talked for a while longer. And I was trying to grasp it all as he continued to discuss things. I began to look at his countenance. I began to look at him. He had white hair. He had blue eyes, very blue eyes. He wore a short sleeve knit shirt. His eyes were so blue and his pupils in his eyes were so dark that when I looked into the pupil of his eyes, I saw an image of Jesus. I know that sounds crazy, but I saw an image of Jesus in the pupil of his eye. I can't remember much of, of everything we talked about. But then what, as the conversation was winding down, he asked me, he said, could he pray for me? I said, yes, please pray for me. I can't remember what he prayed, but I do remember this part. He prayed for healing and health in my body. Then I reciprocated and I prayed for him and he started to cry. 
As he, as we finished up, I shook his hands and I looked in his eyes again. And I said, I see Jesus in your eyes. And then he left and I never saw or heard from him again. The things that he told me about, I went back and studied and I found more answers to my spiritual dream. I know that that guy was an angel. I know he was an angel. Angels are all around us. They are active, yet we don't see them too much. As we are in the last days, the time right before Daniel's 70th week or the seven-year tribulation period, as other people like to refer to it, there will be an uptick in angelic sightings, an uptick in angelic intervention, angelic warfare. Right up to the rapture of the church, there will be angelic upticks and sightings of all these angels doing things. After the church is gone, angels will still be left on the earth, fulfilling prophecy and fulfilling God's will. I began to study about angels in the book of Revelation. I look at verse chapter 8 all the way through chapter 22, and in every chapter there is mentioned angels, and they are doing something, except one chapter. Chapter 13, it talks about the Antichrist and the false prophet, the two beasts, the beast from the land and the beast of the sea. But every other chapter, from chapter 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, all the way up to chapter 22, it mentions angels in some capacity doing something during that time period. There's going to be a lot of angel activity after the church goes. Angels are blowing trumpets, we read about as they blow the trumpet judgments during the tribulation period. Angels are pouring out the bowl judgments as we read during the tribulation period. There is one angel or three angels in Revelation 14. They are proclaiming messages worldwide flying through the atmosphere. They will be involved at the end as well. They'll be involved up to the very day that the Millennial Kingdom comes into play, and they'll be here during the Millennial Kingdom. Something that I find really interesting is the sixth trumpet judgment. So look at Revelation chapter 9. Revelation chapter 9. This is the sixth trumpet Reading at verse 13, Then the six angels sounded, and I heard a voice from the, four, from the four horns of the golden altar, which is before God, saying to the sixth angel who had the trumpet, Release the four angels who are bound at the great river Euphrates. So the four angels who had been prepared for the hour and day and month and year were, were released to kill a third of mankind. Now the number of the army of the horsemen was 200 million. And I heard the number of them. There are four angels who have been bound for a certain time during the tribulation period, during the last few years of of the tribulation, during the sixth trumpet judgment that will be released. They are at the Euphrates River. They've been placed there by God, and this angel is going to release them at a certain time. I don't know who these who these fallen angels are, these demons, but I, I, have, I have a suspicion. And I'm reading now from the book of Enoch, chapter 10, verse 4. And again the Lord said to Raphael, Bind Azazel, hand and foot, and cast him into the darkness, and make an opening in the desert, which is in Duadal. I have no idea how to say that. And cast him therein, and place upon him rough and jagged rocks, and cover him with darkness, and let him abide there forever, and cover his face, that he may not see light. And on the day of the great judgment, he shall be cast into the fire. Then in verse 11, and the Lord said unto Michael, Go, bind Samajaz, Samjaza, and his associates, who have united themselves with women, and so to have defiled themselves with them in all their uncleanliness. And when their sons have slain one another, and they have seen the destruction of their beloved ones, bind them fast 
for 70 generations in the valleys of the earth to the day of their judgment. Now the consummation to the judgment that is forever and ever is con consummated. So Enoch is talking about these fallen angels that Genesis 6 talks about where these fallen angels began to procreate with human females and their offspring were giants and they were judged. God judged these angels. They did something they weren't supposed to do. And those 200 angels, Enoch mentions there are 200 of these who made an agreement to do this. And these 200 angels and, and their leaders were bound and they are still bound. They've been taken out of the game. They've been taken off of the board, so to say. They've been removed, and, and they've been bound in prison, waiting for their judgment. Peter mentions this as well, 2 Peter 2, 4. For if God did not spare the angels who sinned, but cast them down to hell and delivered them into chains of darkness, to be reserved for judgment. Peter's mentioning as well as he's talking about Noah, that these angels were chained in, in a place reserved uh, for later they will be judged. I don't know who these four fallen angels are. I don't know exactly, but I have my suspicions that Enoch and Peter are talking about those group of angels, four of these angels anyway, who, who were bound until the end, bound for a certain time to destroy a third of mankind. How? With a 200 million man army, which the Bible refers to as the kings of the east. Now it gets really interesting. Look at the sixth bowl judgment. That would be at Revelation chapter 16. Revelation 16, the sixth bowl judgment, looking at verse 12. Then the sixth angel poured out his bowl on the great river Euphrates, and it, its water was dried up so that the way of the kings from the east might be prepared. And I thought, saw three unclean spirits like frogs come out of the mouth of the dragon, out of the mouth of the beast, and out of the mouth of, of the false prophet. For they are spirits of demons performing signs which go to the kings of the earth and of the whole world to gather them to the battle, the great battle day of God Almighty, which also is referred to as the battle of Armageddon. The sixth bold judgment dries up the river Euphrates and this army from the kings of the east that we read about in the sixth trumpet, this 200 million man army begins to move towards the valley of Megiddo, towards the battle of Armageddon, where the Lord returns at the end of the tribulation period, destroys the beast, destroys the false prophet, destroys this great army, and then establishes his millennial kingdom. So you may be saying, so what does that have to do with the believer or the church of God? I don't understand. You said that we won't be here during the trumpet and bold judgments. You said, Brother Mike, that the church will escape the wrath of God. That the rapture removes people before the wrath, wrath of God comes. You said that the rapture happens at the sixth seal. Why are you telling us all this? Did you change your mind? No, I haven't changed my mind. Everything that I just said there is correct. But my point is this. We are so close to the rapture. Why? Because currently, go ahead and look for yourself. Check me on. Fact check me. The Euphrates River, the great Euphrates River, is drying up. And if that river is drying up now, and the four angels who are bound at the great river, Euphrates, are going to be released very soon, then work backwards then we will have to be out of here before any of that happens. This is amazing. This is awesome. The Bible, Bible prophecy is happening right before our eyes. We are living in the last days and we are seeing Bible prophecy happen. If you are wise and you can read the signs of the times, then you know in your spirit, not much more time is left. 
So before the great rapture event, before the rapture occurs, we need to continue to move fast and to reach the lost, to tell them that Jesus is the way, that you must be born again, that Jesus Christ is coming soon at the rapture, and they can go. They can go up to be with the Lord and be with him forever. We need to tell people Jesus Christ is coming soon. God bless you. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you haven't liked or subscribed yet, please do. Every week I do one or two videos about the rapture, about Bible prophecy, or about end times. So until next time, keep looking up. Jesus Christ is coming soon. God bless you.